What's going on, boys? G Town 17.2. And uh, Glover, I finally took the hat off for you. And I actually got the hipster cut. There's the line, baby. <laughs> Woo! And we got a special guest today joining us for this edition of the vlog. G Town, what up? Glad to be here. The historian is in the house, man. We got the whole G Town All Stars Council right here. Woo! <laughs> so, whatever we choose and decide today, I guess I just say deal with it. Uh, Kamish, give us the run through. What are we talking through today? We're going to take a, a new updated look at the keeper situation, uh, including the trade between G and Schwabi. And then we'll get uh, an update on the discussion around an extra roster spot with, with Wood as the naysayer. We'll hear that perspective played out on video. So let's jump into some keepers. There's been a, there's been a lot of movement here. So uh, technically, I think keepers are due tomorrow. That's, that date's been in there for a long time. So if you need a little more time, let me know. Otherwise, get that thing locked in. I think Paul's probably the only one who hasn't watched a video or checked his fantasy. But his keeper is obvious. I also would love to see him make a really dumb decision. So I don't want to tell him who to keep either. So um, besides that, I think we're – Big Daddy, we were, we were not sure what Big Daddy was going to do. And he has declared Rogers as keeper. So it's a fairly happy price. But you get Rogers. So what? What's that? He would forty something. How much is Rogers? Yeah, forty one. Okay. Does anyone want to uh, evaluate that yet, or do we want to save that for another vlog? We save can... it till it locks in. Okay. Okay. We'll save it till it locks. We'll save it. Yep. Um, and then, so the Schwab will be keeping Freeman after the trade, which will then allow Gentry to keep Melvin Gordon. Mom, how much? How much is? 17. How much is Melvin? 17? Yeah, he was 7 and then 10 in the trade. So I like, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's a good move for G because he didn't have great options. So the Schwab is going to be sitting at 219 bucks while the rest of us are sitting at 210 and G's sitting at 200 <laughs> So Schwab gets to work it. I went in there again and tried to just set auction values just for the Schwab to bump him up, but I'm going to have to, I think, tweak keeper values again because it, it wasn't working for me. So we'll get it all worked out, and then I'll have the league historian who loves numbers double-check and make sure it's all done right. But Of course. Um, then E. Wood has thrown DeMarco in there. Is that yeah. final? Fine. Okay. 15 bucks on DeMarco, so that's a sweet value. Boomer. Um, let's see. Rise, Le'Veon. Who am I missing? So Coog had a Jai. Uh, I talked to Glover this morning, and he's leaning Crowell. Okay, I did look, and Matt Ryan is a zero. He did not get drafted last year. Yeah. You, had, you had mentioned that he was thinking about Ryan, too. And I thought Ryan was a few bucks, but he's actually – he would be free. So so that's Glover's conundrum there, huh? Yeah, he's leaning yeah. Crowell, though. Okay. And then – who have I forgotten? Verge, David Johnson, that one's obvious. Uh, Paul, what are his options? Do we want to tell him? I mean, he's got an obvious one. He's you can tell him. He's not going to watch this. Yeah, Jordan <laughs> yeah. Howard. And Jordan Howard for a dollar. You got to do that. Okay, yeah. What are? Is, is there any other options? I don't think anything <laughs> good. And you're Gary Barnage? <laughs> top 10 back for a dollar. Easy money. So, that that pretty much dials us all in. I was Glover was the only one I wasn't sure about, so. That's great. Now, as we're thinking about the uh, draft day, switching from a, an evening dinner to a brunch Saturday, walk us through this, the, the menu. What, what, what's in, what's in, what have we got to look forward to here? Well, it has not been finalized. I can guarantee there will be a lot of meat. Uh, I know a lot of guys are probably not eating a ton of carbs, so I don't know if there will be anything sweet, but I'm open, so throw your suggestions on the <laughs> I can guarantee you there will be bacon and sausage and eggs. I mean, I can have some tortillas if guys want to throw it in a burrito with some salsa. I'll probably, probably fry up some potatoes of some sort. Our we, league has gotten healthier as we've gotten older. That's yeah. Pretty, pretty we great. Folks, we got some folks slimming down around here. So, <laughs> And you're one of them. I can, I can see. What, what do you, walk us through your uh, transformation. Not that that's, that's what this vlog is about, but my <laughs> gosh, you're wasting away over there, bro. I just got inspired by Polly, so. I, yeah. I just went on the bacon diet and it's working. So 
Nothing but bacon all day, every day. <laughs> I eat a good amount of bacon, sausage, uh, just just keto in it. So high fat, protein, no no sugar, no carbs, and been doing it for about four months, and it's been been working. Yeah, awesome. Congrats. So guys, uh, September second, Stump was wondering about uh, just my flight uh, ratio and odds at this point. It's about thirty percent. <laughs> that I'm going to be leaving Saturday morning at 7 a.m. and either parachuting or landing in Troutdale by 7:53, as the flight time's 53 minutes. Okay. So uh, I just say throw that into the prayer hopper. Hopefully we can work that out. Have him fly over my house and just parachute in. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> He's so good. All right, so so that's what's happening now. There is a major debate happening, and this brings up a, a wider, broader question: How do changes happen in our league? I mean, you have a deep. We, I mean, we, yes, we're a relational group, but we're we're an institution at the same time. G Town is not just relationships; it's institutional. So, how do you change? What are the bylaws? How do we make these kinds of changes? Uh, Commission, do you want to speak to that? We really, at this point, have only built consensus. So one thing is for sure is we don't make in season changes. Uh, so we, we really probably should write some bylaws. I think, I don't know. Yeah. I, that's kind of where I was going because I feel like even the uh, roster spot switch, it surfaces the big broader question is how do changes happen? And I'm not just thinking our lifetime. I'm thinking our kids and our kids, kids, <laughs> you know, how do we set this league up? So it outlives us is one of the real things I've been wrestling with this week. Yeah, leaving a legacy. This is like generational wealth. Totally, yeah. My, so, squad, my squad and my keepers are going in my will. So exactly. <laughs> the boys are going to be fighting over. <laughs> wow. Well, totally. E, e, e Wood, um, how, do you, how do you feel about this as the assistant to the assistant commish of the G-Town All-Stars? What do you think we need to be do, thinking about – to make these kinds of choices i think bylaws a constitution is the way to go we write all this out so everyone's on the same page and we know we don't change anything during the season we wait till after the season we'll take a vote we got to have majority we got to have people on board it's the way we got to go yeah okay that's great so now we're faced with this important decision about roster spots and i know there's been some debate about this even amongst the leadership. Uh, and let's be honest, debates, we're not a democracy. We're a monarchy. Whatever Stump wants, he gets, <laughs> a.k.a. Marshawn. Uh, but <laughs> but, 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 but let's, uh, let, let, let's just debate this out a little bit. And uh, for our listeners, all seven of them, let's, give us your best argument on uh, keeping it at the existing 10 or moving to 11 with a possibility of 12. Uh, let's go with uh, who th believes we should do that. I vote in favor of that. Uh, Stump, you take it away with your argument. Yeah, I, I mean, I do too. We're at eight right now, so this would be nine. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, I want to have an extra shot at hitting one of the sleepers that I like, basically. That's what it kind of comes down to. And I feel like there's such a jumble, like the, the top 40 guys who don't get drafted – we watch each other pick them up 38 different times before the season even starts because we're all feeling that angst. And it'd be nice if we all had a chance to grab a guy that we like, an extra one, and be able to hold on to him. Um, there's actually other ways. I don't know how flexible ESPN is. I know a friend in another league, they have like a – you get like three rookies that are on like – not even on your – they're like a ghost roster that you can like you, – you keep their rights, but they're not playable unless you – put them up onto your playable roster. So there's some different things we could look into. I don't know if ESPN is that flexible, but um, that way you can, you can take a shot at a rookie receiver who probably won't be that great this year because rookie receivers usually aren't. But maybe in a year or two, you've got yourself a stud. Backs will have a little bit more of a chance of being guys that hit this year. Uh, so that's what I like. Then I don't lose Alfred Morris or David Johnson or things like that. I have an extra roster spot to keep them. That's my thinking. All right, I'll, I'll jump on that bandwagon. And my argument's very simple. Jay Ajayi. Half our league owned that dude last year. <laughs> and Coog happened to pick him up before he went for 
multiple 200-yard rushing games. Yep. Let's not call that good GMing because we all tried it. Let's call it luck. Let's minimize the luck factor in our league. Let's reward good GMs. Let's not reward who happen to be up at earliest morning on you know Tuesday. I got up at 3.30. I beat the other guys up. I put a little bit more in the free agent budget to acquire this guy. Let's reward diligence, hard work, and skill. Let's not reward crab shoot, luck, nonsense. So all this does is build a better league with more attention to detail. And I want to see fantasy owners working harder this year, not getting luckier. Wood, take it away. (laughs) We're not a dynasty league. We're a regular year-to-year league that happens to have one keeper. So we don't have to have these huge rosters with all of our flyers down there at the end. I want wheeling and dealing week to week. I want to make fun of Big Daddy when he spends 100 bucks week one on whoever that was. <laughs> I, want to, I want to use my free agent acquisition budget to make good moves throughout the year. And I want there to be people available out there on the waiver wire. I vote for removing a roster spot. (laughs) Case closed. Uh, That's where I'm coming from. I love the passion. I I will. I'm gonna actually be a little contrarian on both arguments because a I think I think it's a little bit lucky either way. So I think we're we're adding opportunities for good GMs to get lucky. One more one more strike. Because it wasn't like I was completely shrewd and saw that David Johnson was going to turn into David Johnson. Or that Paul last year knew Jordan Howard was going to be in the situation he is this year and he gets a $1 keeper. So I think it's upping a little bit of the luck factor and just giving us a few more more chances to strike. Uh, I also don't think it's – I think these guys that are going to get drafted are more the type that probably aren't going to be very playable – at least for a large portion of this year. So I don't think it's going to water down waivers very much. I think all the the kind of playable scrubs that were like last year's Terrence West or Robert Kelly and guys like that are still going to be out there, and we're still going to have battles on waivers for them. These are more like uh, the third string running back. These are your Samaj P. Ryan's wood for a little bit. Mm, yes. That, that he's probably going to sit third string and not get hardly any work. But if an injury happens or if he just starts slowly proving his worth as the season goes on, by week 10, you may have something. That's what, that's what I have in mind. I'm all for a rookie draft or having a rookie slot. That could be pretty fun. I'm going to look into that. I, I think Wood's on to something there. I like the idea of getting young talent that we're all taking a flyer on a guy because there's something fun about evaluating non-playable guys and saying who's the best at evaluating, you know, because we have to have a reason to watch the third preseason game, right? I got to be watching what these guys look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the fourth preseason game, you know, fourth quarter, you care. We've got to make that thing valuable. And this kind of roster move makes it – brings the value up. How can we spend more time wasted on watching football? That's you know, Yeah. And, and we just answered that question. That's a good point, Moffat. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So, I will look into adding uh, – rookie only spot on the roster see if ESPN has that as an option because I like that that would kind of uh hit the sweet spot for everybody maybe uh-huh if that doesn't happen and that's not available to us then we're still right now it's five to two on the voting so three people haven't voted Paul and two others so there's still one more vote required so maybe people are compelled by Wood's arguments today and they all three vote. People. if it's a five five then we don't add anything so that's right and we could have a compromise in there somewhere because the voting, what we have right now, is for one this year and one more next year. And I'd be fine if we just scrap the next year edition and try it out with one and then see where we're at. Sounds good. Before we go uh, to our league historian, anything stand out to you? Any trends you're seeing? Any, I know you're a numbers guy. As you've uh, broke this off, the, our whole league, onto an Excel sheet. Is there anything that you're looking for this year statistically from any GMs specifically? 
Oh, I should have done some research. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how the quarterback spending goes this draft. We, we have been on an interesting trend. Uh, I guess thanks all to Big Daddy, but we'll, we'll see if it continues this year. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Kamesh, you got any last words? Nope, let's get this thing rolling. I'm ready to draft, man. Let's do it. All right, boys. See ya. Peace.